Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and look, uh, we're going to talk about something today that I find quite interesting because, okay, sure, the big news of the big news. We haven't even gotten to November 1st, and Pokemon Scarlet and Violet have leaked online. Okay, that's a thing. Uh, whatever, that's going to happen. It happens all the time. Why they have copies of Pokemon this early is beyond me, but you know what? It, it is what it is. I guess they wanted to give, you know, two, three weeks for, for media outlets and such to do something with it. And while leaks usually don't come from the media, things fall off a truck. Leaks are going to be coming out galore. Now, we've actually been getting Pokemon Scarlet and Violet leaks pretty much since the summer. But now we have, you know, leaks are going to be coming in from a new place, right? The actual final build rather than an old build that seemingly came from a group that was doing QA testing. Now, the big thing to remember here is we're not actually going to talk about what the leaks are. We're not going to get into the leaks. We're not going to even reveal any new information on Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So that's not what this video is about. This video is actually about something rather interesting happening that I'm surprised Nintendo didn't try cracking uh, cracking down on like at all before because these leaks have been going on for so long and not just these leaks, all Pokemon leaks have been going on forever. I, Nintendo's trying to shut it down legally. They are taking every legal course action they can and one of the biggest accounts, the, the probably the largest in terms of gathering information from other leakers and from their own sources would be Central Leaks on Twitter. I do follow them. I do pay attention to what's going on there in case there's something we need to cover. And this just happened to be something that I feel like we need to address. So they put this out there and I have now independently verified this. I actually got a hold of somebody else who, yes, I know is leaking information and I was shown documents uh, proving that Nintendo is trying to take legal action. Uh, and here is what Central Leaks put out on Twitter. So this is out publicly. This is something I can share with you guys. I'm not going to share private legal documents. It says, hey, Nintendo trying to send a cease and desist to Latin America. Oh, wait, you don't even have an eShop here. And even less Latin American Spanish translations for Pokemon games. Have fun with our useless and incredibly slow legal system. Then it says, bring it. Next, it says, for Central League specifically, our team is scattered across Paraguay, Costa Rica, Argentina, Venezuela. It's not the same as our main account team. And then they put out pretty much a similar message in, uh, I believe, Spanish or so. Now, they follow this up later with a new tweet. And this, this one's quite interesting because it goes in a little bit more detail. It says, here's what's happened so far. Major media outlets will be getting the review copies starting early next week. That's basically today, tomorrow. Nintendo has sent threatening letters to other league accounts, potentially in anticipation of cease and desist if they post any leaks. We will cover leaks anyways. We think leaks from reviewers are very unlikely. Nintendo does a good job at catching them and making sure they lose their job and never get one again in the industry. Getting court orders to get their IP addresses from places like 4chan or Discord. And that's right. Nintendo is pretty big sticklers about it. If you get a copy of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and want to share information safely with the world, you can DM us in our main account at Centro Pokemon. You can also send us an email to via centropokemon.proton.me. Now, basically what Central Leaks is doing is they are staring down Nintendo and going, hey, you ain't going to be able to touch us. Yes, they have multiple Twitter accounts. Central Leaks itself has 233.1 thousand uh, uh, views or followers. Their local account that's in, in the actual origin country, Central Pokemon, has 268,000. Uh, so they're pretty big accounts, and they have a, a few other accounts lurking out there as well. This is quite interesting because... There are certain reasons that some leaks don't get shut down. A lot of leaks of Nintendo games, for example, Nintendo games leak all the time. They come from places like China, where Nintendo can't really do much about it legally. Clearly, they think they can maybe make some progress in Latin America, but I don't know. According to Central Leaks, their legal system really isn't that great, and there's probably not going to be enforced. So I, I find this quite interesting that... Just now, they are deciding, hey, all these leak accounts out there, we're going to try to get them shut down. What's interesting, of course, is that most of Central Leaks and, 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 and a lot of the Pokemon leakers are doing it on Twitter, and yet they're not going towards the Twitter management being like, hey, shut these accounts down. 
they're sharing, you know, private information. They're, 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 they're sharing information they're not legally able to share. Maybe it's because Twitter doesn't care. Maybe it's because, well, I don't know. I don't think it has much to do with Twitter changing ownership because these accounts have been doing this for so long and so many years that Nintendo could have shut this down a long time ago. But I, I just kind of feel like Nintendo has a couple fundamental issues in their pipeline. One, it turns out that leaks aren't really coming from reviewers. They're not really coming even from people who might get review copies on social media. It's it's quite interesting because the big assumption all these years has been that when Nintendo games leak online, it's, it's coming from the media. It's coming from the review outlets. But as Central Leaks points out, that's not really where the leaks come from. What happens is when they send retail copies out, sometimes they arrive at stores a couple of weeks early. And let's just say one of them goes missing from the back. And it's usually a retail employee or a friend of an employee that gets their hands on it and leaks it to the internet. And that's typically how people are playing the game early and obviously um, getting all this information out there about the games, which is assuredly going to happen pretty soon. Uh, Nintendo obviously worries if they don't get the retail copies to the retailers in time. Like if they wait, okay, let's ship them out a week beforehand. What if there's some shipping delays? We've had many shipping delays all over just the United States, and then the retail copies don't even get to retailers, and then legit customers that want to show up day one to pick up their copy, they have to be like, hey, sorry, we don't have them. This is why Nintendo does them a couple weeks early, because they want to make sure that they actually have their hands on those copies. So, look, I, I find this to be quite interesting. Nintendo's going this legal route. I don't know that it's going to make much ground, because I feel like if they could... They would have made much more ground of this. I don't think cease and desist are going to slow the information. And I think right now, Nintendo is just kind of grasping at straws. But I want to know what you think. Nintendo obviously is trying to do everything they can, but they know they can't stop it. Uh, and do you think they should even be trying? Because now they're just drawing even more attention to leaks uh, by doing this. And I feel like maybe that isn't the right way to go about this. But what do I know? Nintendo just wants to protect their games. You guys let me know what you think down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Rubblejance from Nintendo Prime, and I will catch you guys in the next video.